Now it's time to make the handles or uh, poles. Uh, I've made up three prototypes here out of cherry and uh, I'll show you how these look mounted temporarily on the doors with some double-sided tape. Now we selected uh, the one design that has a convex face with a concave face. It's a compound uh, curve here. And uh, this mounts onto the door drawers with uh, two dowels uh, that go into holes. And uh, it, because it's uh, the leg structure is cherry, we pick cherry for this wood. They'll both age the same. They'll get the same uh, uh, darkening. And uh, this has got a nice feel to it. So I'm going to go through the entire process of how uh, these poles are made. I start the process out by cutting blanks from cherry, preferably the same wood that was used in the legs. And uh, these blanks are designed to fit into a small template that I've made that marks where the holes for the dowels go. So this template can be used both on the blanks and can also be used on the drawers and the door fronts so that the dowel holes are in the exact same place. And these blanks are sized so that they will be such I can cut the uh, shape of the pole out of the blank. I very precisely marked the centers of the dowel holes using a transfer punch, which is the same diameter as the hole in my template. It's important that these holes be uh, exact because you're trying to get the uh, handle to fit onto the door um, and, and have no gaps when you're done. You want it to look very nice, so very, very close uh, um, tolerances. Now, I've marked the depth of the drill so that uh, I don't drill too far into the blank and therefore risk having the drill hole uh, show up when I start shaping uh, the actual handle. And I'm using a drill press uh, set so that the depth is the same as, uh, as I want to the edge of the tape. And I'm holding the piece in a small portable vise so that I get a very accurate um, uh, a hole here and it's not hard for me to hold on to. The next step is to trace the outline of the uh, prototype handle onto the blank so that I can bandsaw away the rough waste. I'm not looking for anything exact right now because you'll see that later the real shaping happens freehand. But it's nice to get as much waste away as possible. At this point, I'm going to do the rough shaping on the bandsaw just to get away uh, a lot of the waste. And then uh, later on, we'll do the, the real shaping, the fine shaping on the oscillating spindle sander. interesting part, the actual shaping of the handle. I used to use a knife and whittle the handles 
And I did that for a cabinet or two and got tired of having uh, cut up thumbs and sore hands and I thought there's got to be a better way. So I took uh, my oscillating spindle sandal, sander, which is just a, uh, a drum sander and this will oscillate up and down as it spins. And uh, by using that with a dust collection hookup, uh, I'm able to shape the piece uh, much, much faster than with a knife and my fingers don't hurt at all. spindle sander. Now's the hard part, hand sanding. I'm starting with uh, 220 grit sandpaper because I had sanded this down to uh, some of the drums were 120, some were 150 grit. So we'll start with 220, we'll work ourselves up to at least 400, maybe P600. I've sanded the three pulls for the drawers. Uh, I'm going to get those finished and installed and that will help me determine whether I need to uh, change the dimensions any on the door pulls to make everything look right. But first I'm going to go ahead and finish these pulls using uh, shellac polish. Uh, just rub some on here. I'll do uh, several coats until we have the right feeling. It's got to feel right. Uh, we'll sand in between coats. I went ahead and sanded these down to P600. So we'll go ahead and just let that dry. Now I'm going to mark the uh, points where the holes go in the fronts of the drawers. I've taken my jig, my marking jig. I've put some masking tape on here so I could mark exactly the center vertically of the drawer. I've got little lines on my marking jig that show the center line through the through the holes and I've got this clamped in place so it won't go anywhere. I'll take my transfer punch, pointy end down, make a little mark, make sure my jig hasn't shifted any. Now I'm ready to go over to the drill press. Now to drill the holes for the dowels for the handles, I'm using the shopsmith again. This is a really versatile tool. Uh, I was able to lower the table down to the point where I could fit the entire drawer on here. The back of the drawer being the registration to make sure that the holes go perpendicular to the uh, axis of the drawer. And uh, I've set my depth so that the uh, holes will be a little more than a half inch deep. I'll be using one inch dowels, half inch in the handle, half inch here, glued. Should, be, should work out very well. So 
And there we go. Two holes in the drawer front, ready for the handle. Okay, I've laid the top in place, just so I can see how the handles look. The three drawer handles, they're not glued in place yet. The, the finishing's not even done. But they are doweled in so that I can uh, see where they fit. And I've used double-sided tape to attach the handles for the doors because uh, I had a suspicion that the door handles were going to look a little large compared to the drawer handles. And uh, in fact, they do. Uh, part of that might be coloration. These are lighter color and these are dark, so the difference, uh, the contrast stands out. And plus, I haven't hand sanded the door handles yet, so the sharp edges may tend to make the handle look a little larger. But, uh, you know, this is a mock-up, uh, really, for handles, and I've uh, got to solve the problem to make these door handles uh, look proportionally uh, the right size. Attaching the handles to the drawers is pretty straightforward. I match up the correct handle with the correct drawer. Take a little glue and go ahead and glue the inside of the drilled holes in the drawer front. Spread that around. You want to make sure there's plenty of glue. And then I glue the dowels themselves. These are fluted dowels. Lots of glue surface. And I'm not going to worry about squeeze out because I'll be able to use all the glue. I'll just take the squeeze out and using my spreader, go ahead and glue the outside of the dowels. extra glue on the tops here. I don't feel I can put too much glue on for this particular operation. You really want to make sure these handles are attached well. Now I'll glue the inside of the handle holes. Make sure the arrow is pointing up on the handle. And go ahead and bring it on home. Now you notice there's a lot of squeeze out. That's a good thing in this case because any extra squeeze out is going to help fill any microscopic gap in the seating of the, of the handle. And it's easy to wipe off. Okay, now I want to bring the handle home nicely and snugly, so a couple of things. I'll put a little pad on here. I've got a uh, clamp where I put a pad on the uh, bottom of the clamp. A little block there, pad. And I'm not going to clamp this tight. I just want the handle to be nice and snug against the drawer front. So make sure everything's centered here. And I can tell that she's coming down nicely because I'm getting a little squeeze out. Which I'll then just wipe off. Let that sit for a half hour or so and we'll be in good shape. We mounted the handles on the drawers 
and uh, then tried different combinations of how to mount the handles on the doors to get the right look. Uh, I had said earlier that uh, having the handles like this just wasn't looking right to me. What we finally decided was that we really needed to mount the handles horizontally like this and that way the curve on the front of the handle would uh, complement the curve on the front of the, of the buffet and the horizontal orientation of the handle was not fighting the horizontal um, curl in the maple. So we're going to go ahead and mount the door handles uh, just like this in line with the center uh, drawer handle. And here I'll show you a uh, photograph of what it looks like with these handles temporarily in place. I've marked the position for the dowel holes on the door. I'm going to set the handles in uh, so this, this hole is two and a half inches in from the from the inside edge. It's important that these holes be perpendicular to the handle. Uh, so to, to get that alignment right, I've taken the uh, uh, part of my combination uh, gauge here and I've laid it up against uh, between the two holes and uh, I've shimmed up the door slightly with these shims so that the uh, the plane between these two holes is going to be perpendicular to the uh, to the drill. As I had to move the door closer to the uh, vertical uprights on the drill press to drill this uh, inside hole. Uh, that caused the curvature uh, relative to the drill bit to shift, so I had to shim the door higher at the back here in order to stay perpendicular to the, uh, the plane between these two holes. And uh, one of the consequences of that additional shimming is it changed the, uh, the depth of the drill bit. It made the drill bit want to dig deeper. And of course, I'm worried about the drill point coming out the other side of the door so I had to adjust my depth um, stops here uh, to compensate. 